right. The vacuum tubes are warming up. This is a special live broadcast right here on Georgia Radio. Happy Wednesday to you, Matt Jolly here on Neighbor to Neighbor. We're talking about the Sunbelt Ag Expo, as you know, when the big show rolls around Moultrie. It just shuts down. The whole town seems to shut down around this year. To tell us all about it is Becca Turner. Becca, welcome to the show. Glad you're here. Thank you. You're off and running this morning. Uh, We are. What can folks expect this year uh, down there at the Sunbelt Ag Expo? Well, they can expect to come out for three days and enjoy the latest technology and innovation in agriculture. Uh, We have got absolutely fantastic weather for all audiences, bring the entire family. There's things for young and old to do to participate and learn about ag. Um, We've got livestock, field demos, uh, the family living building for all of those things that you might want to purchase that's Georgia grown. Uh, The Spotlight State Building this year is Sweet Grown Alabama, um, and so they are talking all about Al- Alabama. Uh, we've got our Farmers of, of the Year from all 10 states on site this week. Uh, the Backyard Garden, you name it, it's here at the Sunbelt Expo. So if you're a farmer in the state of Georgia, you're probably already down there. You probably already know about it. But for those <laughs> of you uh, who, like me, have, a, well, a small garden, uh, whatever, it, it, talk about the encouraging words, if you will, for the for the home gardener that, that can benefit from coming down here and seeing what our number one economic resource is in the state of Georgia. Absolutely. So even if you are a, a large farmer, like you mentioned, certainly we've got lots for you. But if you're not, then we've got things that are just for that backyard gardener. Um, in fact, a lot of your large equipment dealers, whether it be Kubota or John Deere, uh, Massey Ferguson, they actually all have hobby and small lawn tractors. Um that you can utilize on your small backyard garden, uh, as well as the backyard garden area. And the backyard garden area talks all about raised bed gardening, um, watering tips for your backyard, depending upon the type of soil that you have. We have the Sawiga beekeepers here with us new this year. They're a new addition to our backyard gardener garden, talking all about pollinator plants to encourage, um, you know, pollination by bees. Um, they've got honey tasting going on. If you wanted to get into having your own hive, Uh, you know, all sorts of things for the backyard gardener. And then if you're not into gardening, but just want to come and learn about all the other things that are grown here in Georgia, the Georgia grown area in the family living building has lots of products that you can buy, but also lots of fantastic food demos that are going on throughout the week. So we want to make sure that you join us for that as well. Well, It's a lot to see and do down there. And again, if you've not been down to the Sunbelt Ag Expo, it's going on I start on the 17th, runs all the way through the 19th down there in Moultrie, Georgia. Some of the the exciting stuff that I see out right now, really on the technology side, you know, people think of farmers and they think of uh, the old John Deere, the Pop and Johnny that we used to see in the parade. That's not the case anymore. And if you live in Georgia, you know what I'm talking about. But if you're up in Atlanta and you're around the suburbs, you probably haven't seen a tractor in a few years. These things are state of the art. They are. They are state of the art, better than probably the car that you drive. Um, they pretty much are all self-driven at this point. I mean, they do have a driver inside, but they are all automatically driven. Um, we've got lots of drone technology going out here um, with sprayers. Even some of your uh, gators or UTVs um, are all automatic. Um, it doesn't it doesn't take a whole lot of knowledge about um, ag technology to really find something that can fit the bill for what you may be looking for, Um, whether you have, you know, even an acre or less and just want to find something that's useful for your own yard. Um, But just the amount of sustainability that they're talking about, you know, what's great for the environment. You know, so many people don't know that ag is is one of the most regulated but yet safest things that we can participate in, but yet they're the ones that are getting the bad rap a lot of times for what we're doing to the environment. In reality, ag is a step forward um, or a step ahead of many of the industries that we have within our country um, and certainly within our state. Lots of discussion about water conservation here going on at the Sunbelt Ag Expo. Um, So certainly just sustainability all around, and you can find that at nearly every booth that you visit. Well, it's uh, great for kids to come out to. I know you have a lot of school kids over the years uh, that, that have toured the facilities out there and have taken part. Uh, let's talk about the youth educational opportunities because there's a whole bunch going on right now 
Uh, there that are. might be late for this year, but if you want to plan for next year, <clears throat> teachers, this is your shot. Absolutely. No matter what day you come, whether it be Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, you can take advantage of opportunities for youth. But specifically, Wednesday is the day that we have lots and lots of competitions. Those competitions are sponsored by Georgia Farm Bureau and Country Financial Insurance. Um, And then we also have some other things that are going for youth livestock exhibitors to focus on um, the show animal project. Uh, But then most of your big companies are even hosting seminars that their booth for job opportunities, whether the students are planning to go to college or not, um, offering them, you know, sometimes even internships and jobs before they ever get to that point, just because they have an interest in ag. Even if your passion is not agriculture, if your passion is engineering or, um, Anything to do with technology, computers, drones, there is so many opportunities. We've got over 10 colleges and universities that are here. So if you don't want to have to make the trek all over the southeastern United States looking at, say, Clemson or um, University of Florida, University of Georgia, ABAC, Auburn, um, and I'm, I know I'm leaving out lots of them, but we've got over 10 here right. that you can make that all within about a, a 200-yard radius and visit all of those colleges right here. Um, I mean, they're offering students, you know, scholarships and, and other um, opportunities right here while they're where, while they're at the expo. So it's something good to really think about, you know, putting on your radar for years coming up if you're not here with us this year. We're talking to Becca Turner from the Sunbelt Ag Expo. It's sunbeltexpo.com is the website. It's going to be quick linked into the podcast show story after this. Just as we're wrapping things up here, you know, I we're on, I don't know, 75 acres Backs up to another 400. Our studio is in a 100-plus-year-old barn on an old family farm. We love ag uh, at Georgia Radio, and, you know, Georgians love ag. What makes, what makes a good farmer today, Becca? What are you looking for? You know, we have less farmers, it seems like, because we have larger farms. But what makes a good farmer, even if it's just in your backyard, is somebody that is – curious um, about where their food comes from, how it's made, um, and how it is that we can think about those coming into the next generation. Um, And that's really what it's about. Um, I think as long as you have a love for, you know, slowing down sometimes, I mean, it always gets fast paced no matter what the job, and and it does in the ag industry. But making it better, not only for us, but for the next generation. And I think that's what the real focus in ag is right now, is, is thinking more long term. So if that's something that you're interested in, no matter whether you're, you know, in middle school or, or um, you know, way out of school, you know, there's never, it's never too late to get involved in ag. And, and that's what we hope we encourage people while they're here. I think it's great. Becca Turner from the Sunbelt Ag Expo. Thanks for hanging out this morning. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks so much. We'll be right back after this. Country, that's what I grew up listening to. Georgia Radio. We love you more than peanuts and peaches. So glad you're here. Matt Jolly, right here on Georgia Radio. And welcome back here to Neighbor to Neighbor. We're talking now to the Farmer of the Year, the Georgia Farmer of the Year. Mr. Bart Davis joins us. Bart, welcome to the show. Glad to have you here. Well, thank you. How did you get into this? And and first of all, congratulations on this big title. What an honor. Yeah, it is. Uh, well, I've been uh, farming 42 years. I took over the farm when I was 18 years old when I lost my parents and I was uh, nominated by earlier this year for Georgia Farmer of the Year. Do you get any respect down at the feed store now, or they just do what now? I said, do you get any respect down at the feed store with that title? Oh, no, no, <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> it just never works out that way. But so you started farming uh, as a kid because I guess your your parents had a big old what five hundred yeah, uh, acre farm. We started out on about a five hundred acre farm, and. Uh, and that was in 1982 when I was 18. And then we, and with me and my wife and my three children, which are uh, my two sons are in their 30s and my daughters in their 20s. We now we um, own and operate Davis Family Farms, which they partners in. We row crop around 7,500 acres of cotton, peanuts, corn, and beef cattle. My goodness. Well, no reason you're. Farmer of the Year. Other than that, I'll tell you what, that's something to, to write home about right there. 7,500 acres down there. 
And uh, you're from down in South Georgia there where the peanuts love to grow. And Yeah, we are, we're from a little rural town called Durin, which is in Cockwood County. Uh, we actually farm in some of four counties, Darty, Worth, Mitchell, and Cockwood County. My it goodness. sounds like it's spread out, but it's not too bad. It's sort of where all the counties run together there. <laughs> Just right down there in the middle. Yeah. I there lo- you go. I love it. Well, what do you uh, what do you see in the future for farming? Because I mean, this is a big honor, and, I, and I'm so happy that you've uh, received this. But as you know, you're you're thinking toward the future with your kids being involved in this. Uh, where do you think it's all headed? <clears throat> well, it's sort of tough right now. Um, well, inputs is all our inputs, our fuel, our labor, our fertilizer, our parts of repair. Everything has almost doubled in the last two or three years, and our commodities hadn't went up to catch up with it. So. Right now, it's sort of tough. We're hoping on our, our government's going to get a farm bill passed here shortly and and, and uh, make it a little bit better, some better safety nets. Uh, it's, it's sort of tough right now. We just got to hang on and hope the things get better. I mean, it's, it's not uncommon for things to get tough on the farm, but it has got to get better for uh, the farmers to survive, which is the backbone of this state, great state we got uh, in our country. I mean, ag is the number one economic booster in georgia and we got to have it and every country's got to have a strong military and a strong agriculture to survive yeah no i I totally hear you on that one i grew up down in cotton country down in south texas and one of my best friends fathers used to say the best rule to farming is to buy high and sell low (laughs) he said unfortunately (laughs) he's gotten real good at that you know but that's that's the world that, that you live in Every single well, year is it's a difficult. farmer. We we buy everything retail, but we sell everything wholesale. Yeah, so it does make it tough. It, it sure, sure does. does make it tough, and you've you figured out how to navigate these challenges, and and hopefully in the future things will get a little easier. You also have a well, beef operation too, don't you? Yes, yeah, sir. We we raise uh, beef cattle. We have a cow calf operation. We raise feeder calves and replacement heifers and bulls and stuff. You know, all sorts of cattle. Well, that's why this is so important. I mean, you're feeding not only the state, but all, all the fine folks all over the United States, and that's just wonderful. What what do you uh, what do you see in a in a future farmer? Because I know you were involved in the FFA and the Young Farmers Organizations, but what do you what do you see that makes a good farmer? Someone that's listening right now that maybe wants to try this. You got to be dedicated. I mean, you got to have it at heart. You got to have a lot of faith put a seed in the ground you got to have faith they're going to come up you're going to be able to seal by it look after it fertilize it water it, keep disease off of it insects and uh you just you got to it's got to be in your heart you got to do it i mean it's a 24 7 job uh it's sad that uh young people can't hardly start farming today with the cost it is unless they have some parents or aunts or uncles grandparents or somebody they work for that tries to help them because overhead to get started it's just so astronomical right now and it's it's sad i mean we need more farmers we need younger farmers so uh, there's no doubt well and, and you just brought up a very good point i mean it's really tough to get financing now even if you have a large operation but you're just talking about equipment alone uh, what's it yeah. what's the price of one of those tractors go for now that's sitting out there at the at the sunbelt ag expo i, I mean it's well, the biggest John Deere is a two-wheel drive mechanical front-wheel drive tractor that we use on our farm today is a half a million dollars yeah. new. And a cotton picker three years ago when we bought our last cotton picker, it was 750000 Today, a, a six-row roller picker is a little over a million. Yeah. And it's, it's just tough. Incredible. The interest is up. The interest has doubled in the last two years. And just about everything the farmer uses has doubled in the last two years. And it's, it's rough right now. Um, like I say, we need a we need a we need to get a new farm bill written, and uh, you know the farm. A lot of people don't understand that the farm bill is actually not necessarily for the farmers, for the American people. It's to keep food and fiber cheap for the American people, and the farm bill is a safety net to help farmers stay in business when commodity prices are low, and that's what you know it don't trigger any kind of payment or anything unless the market has dropped below a certain amount. And what's happened now? Our triggering prices is is not set high enough to offset the inputs. How can how can folks help you out with that? Well, we we talk to uh, you know our congressmen and men and women each and every day. This, this you know everybody's on the ag committee. I think we got them to understand it. I mean, it hadn't happened yet, but we just got to get a better farm bill passed to keep the farmers and ranchers in business. 
There you go. Well, Bart and his kids will grow it. You just got to call your congressman and call your legislature. Don't send them a letter. Call them and don't, tell them to pass that her, farm don't, bill. Don't, <laughs> don't sit around. Get yeah. involved, whether it's your school, your church, your your ag, ag uh, your commodity um, commodity organizations, where it might be. Get involved. We got to save rural America. There's nobody going to stand up for us if we don't stand up for ourselves. So everybody needs to get out and uh, let it be known what's going on. And talk to your congressmen and women. We Rural America is what keeps this country going. We sure have a lot of it here in Georgia, don't we? Isn't it great? Yes, sir. Just love every minute of it. Well, listen, congratulations, Farmer of the Year, Bart Davis, down there in Doe Run, Georgia. Where, it, by the way, do you sell to the public? Do you have anything that goes direct? No, direct to we don't. We don't. We don't. We thought about start selling beef maybe one day here in the future, but yeah. all our cotton, peanuts, and corn is sold on the you know the local markets. The farmer's way. I love what you said. You buy retail and you sell wholesale. Isn't that the truth? My we goodness. don't have a choice. Well, listen. God love you, and God bless you, Mr. Davis, for all that you're doing, and congratulations on being Farmer of the Year. God bless you and all the American people. We'll talk to you real soon, everybody. Again, if you uh, want to meet Mr. Davis, I, I guess you're going to be down there at the Sunbelt Ag Expo, aren't you, until it, until it ends? I'm here I'm here today, but i got to get back home. We're harvesting cotton and peanuts as we speak. <laughs> all right, sir. We'll talk to you real soon. Bart Davis, everyone. Listen, if you've enjoyed today's show, you can always tune in right here on Georgia Radio 24-7 for the greatest in country music. And, of course, even better than that, we'd love to have you subscribe to our email newsletter. Get all the latest stories and uh, stuff from folks like Bart Davis, the Farmer of the Year. Where else are you going to hear this stuff? We're glad to be here on Georgia Radio. We'll talk to you next week right here at 10 a.m. for Neighbor to Neighbor. And, of course, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I'm back on the air with a Classic Country and requests. So y'all send them on over. Talk to you real soon. So long for now. Georgia Radio. On your phone. In your home. Everywhere you go.